Hey, hey, CyberWork Hacks is back to keep you up to date with the CISSP exam. Today, InfoSec Bootcamp instructor Steve Spearman joins me to talk about the new changes to the CISSP's common body of knowledge, how these changes to the CBK should or shouldn't affect your study and preparation for the exam. Keep learning and keep it here for another CyberWork Hack. Welcome to a new episode of CyberWork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of our CyberWork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you quick, clear, and actionable solutions, or give you a new insight into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. So for example, today, Steve Spearman is an InfoSec instructor, and among his many areas of ex InfoSec expertise, uh, he is our bootcamp instructor for one of the most desired, demanded, and elite certifications, ISC Square's Certified Information System Security Professional, or the C CISSP certification. So for today's CyberWork hack, Steve and I are going to break down some of the forthcoming changes to the CISSP's Common Body of Knowledge, or CBK, in 2024. Thanks for joining me today, Steve. It's my pleasure, Chris. All right. So, Steve, as as, as we know, uh, the CISSP has made some pretty noteworthy changes in what it calls its common body of knowledge this year. So, or it will be soon. This involves shifting priorities of certain topics or assigning different weights or importance to different security concepts in order to keep up with current cybersecurity practice. So, can you talk about what the CBK changes will look like and when they're exactly yeah. going to take effect? Yeah, yeah, I would love to. And and if it's okay, why don't I step back just a bit and Please. talk a little bit about what is the CBK? I mean. Yeah. So this it stands for common body of knowledge, and mm -hmm. it really is the official truth about the CISSP. Yep. Uh, it, it, if if there's a question on the exam, it should originate from the CBK. Uh, in fact, one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is like, should I get the CBK? Because uh, you can buy it. It's it's expensive, but you can buy the common body of knowledge. Hmm. My general recommendation to students is, eh, you don't need to. The official study guide is, be is it's, it's, it's much more readable. It contains probably 90% of the CBK. There's been some interesting... Um, there's been in the last year, there's been some interesting talk about the fact that uh, somebody did a little bit of an analysis and they were able to find questions in the, in different resources available from the ISC2 uh, looking at exam questions. And they couldn't really find topics in either the, uh, the official study guide or in the CVK. But it, it, that doesn't really help us much. I just think it's yeah. an interesting fact. The CVK is is where, you know, questions come from. So um, the 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 uh, ISC two uh, makes changes really almost pretty pretty strictly about every three years. Tri triennially, tri triennially, triennially, you know yeah, I mean. yeah, triennially, triennial, yeah. triennially. Anyway, I'm not going to. We made it. it. Again. <laughs> I think. Yeah, we're yeah close <laughs> enough. Close yeah. enough. Your close your enough uh, viewers will understand. Yeah. Um. So the last one was so it was the last one was 2021. Uh, the the before that was 2018, and to, when with that transition, they added a point to the to the software. They took uh, they took a point away from um, from the uh, the telecom. So the main change that they've made is they've actually that will take place, and it's going to happen April 15th of uh, this year, 2024 is um is they are adding a point uh to the domain one which is the management the the governance management okay. it is in many ways sort of the anchor for the whole exam this is a management exam uh and it's going from 15 percent to 16 percent and they're actually taking a point away from software they're taking a percentage away uh right. for software i think it's worth understanding you'll hear the term waiting like yes exam weights yeah. waiting mm -hmm. is yeah waiting is not actually a really good way to describe what's happening okay uh, waiting would imply that waiting would imply that the questions in domain one are more important than the yes. ones in that that's really it just means the amount of topics yeah uh that, that are in the thing they so they're adding some content to domain one and they're, I don't know if removing it from the software domain or, or they're just it, adjusting. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. the only thing that really happens in the exam that's more like a true waiting is 
the we don't know the algorithm we don't know the scoring right. algorithm the exam itself yeah. but we uh but there is um the 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 exam does measure difficult questions in in a manner that's different than uh than than quote easy questions and every question on the exam is literally ranked as easy medium or hard um and ultimately your ability to pass the exam is is tied to your ability to get hard questions correct yeah yeah um so yeah. So anyway, so the big changes are they uh, they they change change they're changing the weighting for those two domains, uh, and then interestingly, they're going back to change both the number of questions and the length of the exam. So in order to kind of get to what's going on with this, I want to go back to a little bit of history. In uh, in June June first, two thousand and twenty two. The CISSP um, decided to increase the number of questions on the exam um, uh, and increase the time. So on that date, they increased the number, the minimum number of exam uh, questions on the uh, on the on the computer adaptive test from from 100 to 125. And the maximum number of questions went from 150 to 175. Uh and and then they increased the exam time by one hour. So it went from three hours to four hours. OK, interestingly. Wow. When they did that, they didn't change the number of scored questions at all. Mm -hmm. Not like that. They, in other words, they just did it to have more sample questions and sample questions are, are questions that are being statistically validated for use in a future exam. Interesting. So in other words, they don't benefit test takers at all. I've been kind of complaining about this for a couple of years. You're, uh, you're basically they, doing they, un, unpaid labor there for them. It's kind of unpaid labor. Exactly. It's like, you know, yeah. they in adding an hour to every, you know, to every test takers time or whatever. It's like and they're getting all the benefit. Hmm. Um, I suspect that they probably now have a very, very, very healthy database hmm. of usable questions that have been sure. statistically validated because. Uh, on April 15th, they're going back. It's going to be a three-hour exam. Mi uh, minimum number of questions is 100. Maximum number of questions uh, is 150. Uh, so that's the other significant, the the other significant change. So um, you, I, I know that uh, ISC2 is you know makes these changes every three years, but can you talk about why you think they they made these specific changes? And I won't say weights, but these these changes and allocations to their to their certification. Like, what aspects of of the industry were they trying to address by making these changes? Do you think I, we we can't really know exactly, but they do. Yeah. Uh, the ISC2 does have a board that mm -hmm. does a review of the questions and the certification and the common body of knowledge that board determined uh that you know they needed to adjust the weighting of uh, you know those domain weightings uh, and add some content and and i i you know i, I don't have a, a other than you know what the isc2 has said and others other um pundits have said i don't really know exactly why that decision was made, except to feel like, uh, you know, the CBK and the change in the CBK all come down to trying to make the CISSP uh, relevant, like maintaining right. its relevance yes. in the marketplace. And so their own internal analysis must have shown that there was, you know, a need for that change. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ask only because of past guest, uh, Leighton Johnson, we did this with the CISM certification and, and he was saying that there's a, a massive change over there from going back to the security side from the management side. So I know that, you know, they're always thinking in terms of like addressing specific needs in the industry. And, yeah. and also I realized yeah. that there is sort of a black box nat nature to what they do, especially with regards to test scoring and so forth. But uh, yeah, I, I appreciate yeah. the uh, the insights there. So if you're yeah. currently studying for the CISSP, but not scheduled to take the exam just yet, and I know the changes are t coming in April 15th, like at what point do you need to change your study or learning strategy, if at all? Um, I would say, you know, like, first of all, t today, you really can't change it. There's no yeah. new material available. The, uh, the ISC2 is going to drop their own internal training uh, content on April 15th and not, you know, before. But historically, uh, if you've done, so if you have the experience requirements, this is an exam 
that you you have to lean into your experience a lot. It's it you know you need five years in order to become a a, a CISSP. You need to have yeah, five years experience. That's worth pointing out. Absolutely. And, yeah, um, and uh, and and you've then been doing the kind of methodical study that's necessary to pass this exam. I strongly suspect that uh, you know you'll you'll do fine. I, I don't think you're going to see earth shattering changes. Yeah. Uh, that would um, that you know that would be pretty disruptive, and I'm sure even though I'm not dismissing the significance of those changes, I'm sure that they were you know properly evaluated. Uh, historically, when those changes have happened, you didn't it didn't really it, it, it impact the way that you you know you prepared. So I guess I can't be too definitive until we see what happens April fifteenth, but I suspect it'll be the same thing. Yep. You'll 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 methodically you know prepare the same ways you have in the past. Yeah. Uh, so um, you I know, I think it's in, probably in that, something that if you're already well on your way, you, you know, you just just steady as she goes. But if you're like considering starting to study for the CISP at this point, you might almost want to wait until we get closer to April fifteenth, and you have a better sense of yeah. I mean. Or just the opposite. I mean, if mm. you've been studying and you feel like you're ready, it's like make sure you schedule it before April 15th. Oh, for like, sure. I yeah. mean, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If you if you yeah. if you feel like you're ready uh and you want to be able to work uh within a, a kind of a known quantity and no, then yeah, go ahead and take it. Like that would be yeah. my advice, I guess. So yeah, it's 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 no it's no less of a CISSP that you get if you get this one versus the uh the brand mm-hmm. spanking new one. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So. Um, so obviously, InfoSec's all about helping uh, our students pass their certification exams with flying colors. But, you know, we also want to be with you for the long term and help you retain that info and use it to level up your skills in your career. So, Steve, I want to just ask more of a broad brush question, uh, like for people who are taking the CISSP, I know that uh, an awful lot of the the, the buildup to it is that you're just pushing a metric ton of stuff into your head so that you can t- pass the exam in the moment. What aspects yes, of the ex- yes. information on the exam would you say are most crucial to continue learning and practicing to keep your skills at the top of uh, top of the heap? Um, you know, the thing is, I think that gets into more just core preparation stuff, mm-hmm. which is, you know, content, ba- like content and um, in content, understanding how to take the exam, uh, in the techniques around you know, that, I'd love to have another discussion with you about kind of recommended, you yes. know, ideas around that. But, um, the content, like I said, we don't expect any dramatic changes. You should just keep working with the content that's currently available. Uh, I have, you know, I have opinions about sticking with ISC2 material. Uh, you know, I'm not, and, and additional stuff. There's other things that I recommend skills. The skills website and infosec is excellent, um, mm-hmm. but I but I I, I lean heavily into the uh, official study guide, uh, uh, practice exam. Uh, I'm sorry, pro- not practice exams. The study study questions sorry. and the practice exams, mm-hmm. and the official practice test third edition, uh, to kind of help the, the thing. And one and again, the benefit is it it helps you identify the areas that you're you're weak. You know that you can you can continue to study on. So. Right. Um, yeah, so I I think that um, you know ch- the, your actual preparation doesn't change a lot, uh, and you need to you know uh, keep plugging away. Again, my my recommendation for people that really want a shortcut, your best option is a boot camp. Uh, yes. There's there's no question that the boot camp is the boot camps are effective. Yeah, uh, actually, I think extraordinary a good boot camp are ex- they're extraordinary uh, extraordinarily effective at helping people prepare for this exam. So. Well, I hope our, our listeners will keep uh, keep listening to the Cyborg Hack series because in a few weeks here, Steve will be uh, talking to us about uh, what a boot camp is like for CISSP. So uh, that would be great. Yeah. I'm looking as, forward to it. So, as as someone who's taught so so many students over the years, Steve, what's your top piece of advice for studying for and taking the CISSP exam? I mean, top piece of advice is um, do lots of questions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I hate to break it down, but. So you need to understand how to take the exam. That's in maybe for another, you know, uh, mm-hmm. cyber hacks uh, thing. But you need to understand how to take the exam. What are, you know? What what are the techniques you use? All that sort of stuff. Uh, you also want to familiarize yourself with the content, as we said. But honestly, the the key thing is lots of questions. Yeah, it's sort of like you know, if you decided, hey, I'd like to run a half marathon. 
you know, you're going to not just, okay, day of the marathon and you haven't, you know, you haven't put on your running shoes. Just you know, read so a book about how to run a marathon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> you got to put the miles the questions in. Are, yeah, exactly. You got to put the miles in and that in your best way, most important kind of uh, technique to do that is to do lots of questions. So. Well, perfect. Steve Spearman, thanks for getting us caught up on the uh, new aspects of the CISSP. Appreciate it. It has been a pleasure, Chris. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you, I hope you'll please share it with colleagues, forums, or on your own social media accounts. And definitely subscribe to our podcast feed and YouTube page. You can type in CyberWork InfoSec into any of them and you'll be well on your way. There's plenty more to come, including more CISSP with uh, Steve Spearman. So if you have any topics you'd like us to cover, absolutely drop them in the comments. We read them and we take them to heart. Until then, we'll see you next time and happy learning. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.